Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Winnipeg Jets franchise mode here in NHL 24. So in last episode, we made a big trade acquiring Nick Hag from the Vegas Golden Knights and we sent them Logan Stanley. We both ended up making the playoffs, which is good. We finished with a 49-30-3 record and we are going into the playoffs on a bit of a heater at 8-1-1. One one. So really uh, glad that our team was able to pull it together and pull out a very solid uh, season nonetheless but the thing about this uh, playoff run that we're going to have now is I'm a bit concerned because of the fact you can see we are going to be taking on Minnesota who had kind of an average record they were also three and seven in their last 10 games and while we were really good and eight one and one in our last 10 games going into the playoffs I feel like we might get cheesed not that the Minnesota Wild are technically a bad team on paper but uh, they are a team that didn't simulate well. They do actually have a pretty good looking roster too. So I feel like they are definitely a type of team that could definitely pull off like kind of like an underdog story and be able to beat us in the first round, which I don't like. But I'm hoping that we could kind of rewrite that sense and get ourselves to the second round and hopefully beyond that as well. Because we don't have a lot of time to win a Stanley Cup here early on before we go into rebuilding territory. Because we do have some pretty big pending free agents, especially that being of Nick Ehlers, also guys like Bear Banoff. We do stuff like Velarde and Hag, who both have RFA rights, so that's at least a little bit nice. But we might likely lose Nick Ehlers this offseason, which would be a pretty big blow to our top six and could set us into a trajectory where we go more rebuilding. But anyways, before we get into this first round matchup against the Minnesota Wild, I do have to get into some comments. So let's get into the comments that you guys had from last episode. So the first one is from Michael Dost, who says Winnipeg over Wild in six. So he's saying we're going to beat them in six games. I hope that's the case. That would be nice. Uh, less games would even be better than that. But at the same time, maybe it wouldn't be because sometimes if you have a really good first round where you actually sweep a team, it seems like the second round you end up getting swept yourself. So I don't really know what type of playoff matchup I want to have here in this first round, but I don't for a fact, obviously, we want to win this for sure. The next comment is from Det Allen Gamble, who says, As a Jets fan, IRL, I'd love if they made these moves you have made on the back end. It's their weak spot and has been for some time. Should play Kupari more, way too much upside to sit out the whole year, and I believe he sims well as a good two-way center. And yeah, um, with uh, Kupari right now, he hasn't been getting a lot of ice time because of the fact our team is pretty deep at the moment. But what I'm thinking is likely next offseason, or this next season actually for that matter, if we're going to be losing guys like Ehlers, if we're going to be losing guys like Bear Banoff, I think that's going to open up a roster spot for him. Even maybe losing somebody like David Gustafson or Morgan Bear and Mason Appleton, it should open up some room for Kupari to actually get some time in our lineup. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can hold on to him for a decent amount of time. He is a decent, solid player, 79 at 25, so I don't think he's going to develop much more, but he could still be a serviceable fourth liner for us in the future years. And then the last and final comment is from Samuel Otaku, who says, Not sure how I feel uh, about seeing current and former Blues on the Blackhawks. Would have been funny to see them miss the playoffs after all those trade deadline acquisitions. You went on quite a heater to close out the season. Hopefully that doesn't mean disaster for the playoffs, but if it does, it may be time to consider a coaching change, especially to find someone who works well with your defensive core. And yeah, that might be a good idea uh, to look at maybe getting a new coach if we, for some reason, can't find a way to get out of this first round um and yeah our defensive core it simulates really well but we don't have a very good coach for it in terms of chemistry so it would be nice to get one uh because i don't know if somebody like chris Tanev comes back i think nick Hag is definitely somebody i'd like to hold on to for like maybe even four or five years because i think he's great for this top uh four pairing uh top four pairings Matt Roy is still here for one more year, but I think guys like Tanev and Ruta, who are a bit older, will probably be only here for the season, so we might make some defensive changes in the offseason. But anyways, those were the comments I got in last episode, so let's get into this playoff matchup with the Minnesota Wild. Um, I'll briefly show you guys what Minnesota looks like again, just in case you forgot, because you might have forgotten, probably not, because considering I upload this uh, series quite frequently, but... This team didn't finish that good during the season, but you can see their forward core, like their top nine, very solid. Fourth line, definitely a little bit weaker, but still not that bad. And then from a defensive standpoint, they have actually a pretty good defensive core with some really good players like Brodine, Spurgeon. Eric Johnson's not a bad complimentary piece for those guys. 
And then they also have the gold tending with Walstead and Gustus, and they can literally go to either or. Both of them have uh, actually developed the X Factor Sponge, which is interesting. Um, I think, what is that for again? Great rebound control. I have to talk to the devs and find out what uh, equates to uh, players getting sponge because that's kind of weird seeing two goaltenders acquiring sponge. Hmm. Because those guys definitely didn't start with sponge, I'm pretty sure. But anyways, yeah, let's get into this first round matchup and see if we could get to the second round and hopefully beyond that as well. I'm hoping that we don't have to run into Vegas in the playoffs considering we traded Logan Stanley to them. But if we do, it would make for an interesting series nonetheless. Let's get into our playoff mode here. Flip ourselves over to here and let's see what happens in game one. Also, if my computer makes a lot of noise in the background, which I don't think it does, uh, it's just because I am rendering my GoPro video at the time I'm actually recording this video. So kind of trying to kill two birds with one stone. But here we go. Game one on home ice. Let's see if we can get it done. First period. And one nothing wild. That's not a great start. It's not a terrible start. Adam Beckman, of all people, scored first goal five minutes in. Shots are 12 to 9 in favor of us, but we have not found our offensive game just yet. Hopefully, we can find that in the second period. Because Minnesota is definitely, I think, a good defensive team. So we definitely need to kind of find ways to actually score against them and hopefully contain their top guys. Right now, that was their fourth line, I think, scoring. So, yeah, kind of not great to see that their depth actually could show up as well. Let's see if we can get this game tied in a second or grab the lead. Second period. Oh, my goodness. Adam Beckman again. I don't know why this guy's simulating well because I'm pretty sure he's a bottom six guy. Uh, but we are being outshot 24-22, and we're down 2 nothing. So, Hellebuck's playing great in his first game of the playoffs, but our offense has not been existing so far, which is not a great sign. Let's see if we can find a way to get some goals in this third period. Because if not, uh, I don't want to be really shut out this much in the first round. So, oh my goodness, Ryan Hartman makes it 3-0. Yeah, this game's definitely not on Hellebuck. It's not really on the defensive core either. It's definitely on the offense. Because we are throwing a lot of shots to the net, but we're not converting. And unfortunately, we are going to drop game one by the score of 3 to nothing. So that's not an ideal start. Solid defensive effort, solid goaltending effort, but the offense just not there. Beckman with both goals, and then Hartman got a third period goal. Not ideal. Wallstead, the first start of the game with a 35 save shutout. See, we threw a lot of shots to the net, but it did not work. And in plus minus department, it was our top guys that were mostly minus. And Chris Tanev, who had a great defensive season during the regular season, it was a minus two. Yeah, it was definitely not on Hellbuck. Hellbuck kept us in that game, but we don't get any offense. So we will already make some offensive changes, I think, because I do not want this offense to just go quiet for four games and then we're out like that. So let's make some adjustments to see if we could get that offense flowing into our lineup a little bit. Because if our offense is doing nothing, then we're not going to win any series for sure. So uh, let's do a swap between Velarde and Chinnikov. Chinnikov was good during the regular season. We'll swap him and Velarde for something. And then for the rest of this, I think it has to probably stay the same. We could always take out somebody on like the fourth line if we want to. So we could get uh, Kupari in. But I don't really know if I want to do that. Um, hmm. And I don't know if I want to do that just yet. I don't think Kubari is going to bring much offense. We are also going to swap Nick Hag and Vili Hainola for something different. And yeah, we're going to definitely keep with Hellebuck. I do like our defensive play, so I didn't really want to make much defensive changes. But I think that offensive change, hopefully Chinnikov can get our offense going a little bit. So... Also, I apologize about not changing the scene again between uh, my face cam being over here and over in the top corner. I always keep forgetting where it is and all that. Like, I'm still getting used to the location of my face. So, like, when we're not in a playoff sim, I should probably automatically just go to back to this part on the screen. But sometimes I forget. Okay, let's get into game two and see if we could get that offense going because we need that to get going. We could play good defensively like last game, but we need offense too. So first period of game two, this is a big game. We don't want to go down 0-2 headed to Minnesota. First period. And 2-1 Minnesota. They scored the first two goals of the game, so not a great start for Hellebuck early on. Um, Boldy and Erickson Eck, but Matt Roy has us on the board. We're being outshot badly 14-6, so Hellebuck still keeping us in it despite allowing two early goals. 
our offense is just not doing enough at the moment. They did take a lot of shots last game. They didn't score at all. They only take six shots in the opening period, and they do score. So maybe we'll be able to score some more goals in the second second period. It is 3-2 for us. That's what we want to see. Kyle Connor, and, of course, it is Chinnikov as well. Let's go, Chinnikov. Might be the best free agent signing we've made yet in this series for sure. Shots are 24 to 22 in favor of us, and we're up three to two after surrendering surrendering the first two goals of the game very early on. Can we find a way to lock this down and get some insurance? Come on, boys, let's get it done. Get that insurance marker, and then I'll feel a little bit more safe. Power play opportunity. We do not convert. Power play again. At least it's taking time off the clock. Final five minutes of this third period, still only up by one goal. And we are going to lock it down. Hainola, the empty netter. Iafalo, also an empty netter. And we win this one 5-2. to two. That game definitely was a lot closer than it looks because those two empty netters. But good win there for the boys. Despite giving up two goals in the first five minutes, we end up getting back into the game and winning it. So Roy from Velarde and Ehlers. Let me actually move my face cam again so I'm not in the way. <laughs> Connor from Tanev and Shifley, Chinnikov from Connor, Hainola from Ruda and Lowry, and Iafalo from Berbanov. Pretty solid. Connor, Hellebuck, and <laughs> Chinnikov, the three stars of the game. Let's go. Yeah, Hellebuck's been pretty good so far here in the early going. Hopefully, he can continue that the entire playoffs. That would be really nice. So good offensive effort, another very solid defensive effort. Just got to keep on that momentum from the last game. So I'm going to keep the lineup the exact same for this game. Let's pop on back over here before I forget. And let's see what happens in Minnesota. Because we definitely want to win some games here on the road. Because if we lose both games, then we're going to be in a bad spot. If we could win one, that would at least be good. So first period of game number three. Can we take a lead early in this game? We have not had the lead in the first period yet. So first period... Hey, there we go. Two goals, Connor and Ruda. What's with Jan Ruda scoring some goals here? So Jan Ruda off to a good start in terms of the offense, which is not really what I brought him in for, but he's definitely helped out in that case. Shots are 15-11 to 11 in favor of Minnesota, but what a good period again from Connor Hellebuck. He's been our best player, I'd say, so far in this series. And then Kyle Connor's having a good uh, first round here so far too, and at least in his last uh, three periods or four periods. Can we add some insurance in the second to be a little bit safe, or can we just have a good defensive period? Second period? It is. 2-1. Zaitsev gets on the board for the Wild, of course. Of course, Nikita Zaitsev scores. We're being outshot 30-16 to after two periods, so our offense is just, like, leaning back. Our defense isn't doing much either. This is the Connor Hellbuck show at the moment. We're getting completely outplayed, but we've only allowed one goal through 20 mi or 40 minutes. Can we lock it down in the third and get insurance? Because the Minnesota Wild are definitely uh, outplaying us in this game, and we're lucky to be ahead. Hey, big goal from Nick Hag. Let's go. That's why we brought Nick Hag in. No, it's not really why we brought him in. We brought him in for defense, but he's helped out with the offense as well. So the, all the acquisitions we made this year are helping out quite a bit. Eric Johnson makes it a 3-2 game as Minnesota gets back on the board. Final few minutes. Come on, boys. Lock it down. Come on. Yes, Kyle Connor, the empty netter. And another goal from Kyle Connor. Only 10 seconds later, and it was not an empty netter. And we win 5-2 again. <laughs> okay. And we got a shot 45-31. Connor Hellebuck is on a tear right now. And that's what we need from a 91 overall goalie. So Connor from Shifley and Morrissey. Ruta from Morrissey and Valerdi. That was actually Ruta's first. I thought he scored earlier, but he did have an assist last game, I'm pretty sure. Hegg from Tanev. Uh, Connor from Shifley and Chinnikov. And Connor from Chinnikov. So Connor got a hat trick in that game. I didn't even realize somehow. But uh, yeah, Kyle Connor has been great. First star, though, gets uh, Hellebuck because of that great performance. 43 saves. Kyle Connor, the second star. And Shifley, the third star of the game. So we have taken a 2-1 series lead, and we did get a win on the road, which is great. Hopefully we could do that in Game 4 as well and set ourselves up for a good spot. Good the last two games. Game 1 was not ideal, but it was not a bad game by any standard. It was just more the offense was not succeeding on their opportunities. We're going to keep the lineup the same. It's been good throughout these last two games. We've scored 10 and only given up 4. 
Let's see what happens in game four. See if we could take a 3-1 series lead on Minnesota. Come on, boys. Let's get it done. Let's get another win. First period of game number four. Or, yeah, game number four. And it's one nothing us, and it's Cole Perfetti. He had not scored yet, so that's good to see. Uh, we're getting offense from a lot of different players on this team over these last three games, so I do like that. It's mostly been Kyle Connor, but there's a lot of other players chipping in, like Perfetti, Ruda. Um, I think Bear Banoff had a goal right too. So shots are 11 to 10 in favor of us, so a pretty good period by any standard uh, in terms of shots. It's a lot better than. Uh, being badly outshot like last game. So hopefully we can keep the shots a little bit closer and not as much in Minnesota's favor. Can we get some insurance in the second second period? 2-2. Two, two. I mean, they scored two goals in a row and then we tied it up. So that's at least good that we tied it up. But Marcus Foligno with both their goals. Nick Ehler scores for us. Maybe one of his last goals here in Winnipeg. You never know. Shots are 24-18 in favor of Minnesota. So once again, they're outplaying us. But Connor Hellebuck has been really good let's see if we can grab that lead back in the third come on boys penalty kill early into the third period and it's a long one we kill it off though nicely done come on boys ah oh, zuccarello scores minnesota has the lead for the for a second time in this game i almost said the first time final five minutes of this third period can we get an equalizer come on boys ah oh, eric johnson man eric johnson's been good in this series and unfortunately, we're going to drop this game 4-2. to two. That game's not on Hellebuck. We got a shot 38-31. So once again, we're kind of giving up a bit too much offense. And we end up losing this one. So we have a tie series headed back home. This might be a series that goes six games. You never know. Let me pop back over to here. Not get rid of my face completely. Uh, so our goals were Perfetti from Morrissey and Velarde. And Ehlers from Velarde and Tainola. Hmm. Any badly minus players in that game out of curiosity? Uh, not really. And yeah, Hellebuck was... I guess that was Hellebuck's worst game, but by my standard, giving up uh, only four goals on 38 shots isn't really that terrible of numbers. I mean, he had an 895 save percentage, but I still think Hellebuck was the reason why that game was close. So three stars of the game, Felino, Wallstead, and Rossi. This has been a pretty good goaltending uh, matchup, it seems like, in the playoffs. I definitely think I'm going to readjust the lines a little bit just because we're giving up too much chances defensively. So I am going to probably move to Nick Hag back to the top six to maybe try and limit their offense because I think Hainola probably gives up a bit more offensive chances than uh, Nick Hag would. But could be just me thinking more realistically. So uh, hmm. I wish Tanev worked with Morrissey because Tanev is pretty good. And yeah, Hellebuck has been one of our best players for sure. Uh, do we want to find a way to get our offense going again? I, I don't know. Hmm. I think we'll probably keep this the same. How has our fourth line been? Not terrible. You know what? I'm going to do a change to our fourth line. Move out uh, Morgan Barron since he's minus one. And we will give uh, Kupari an opportunity here in the playoffs to uh, prove himself. And we'll see if he's able to help us out, maybe with a little bit of offense, but more so on the two-way side of things to keep the shots to a minimum because I think that's been our major problem is giving up way too many chances in this series. And it's not been on Hellebuck for those goals going in. Okay, let's get into game five and see if we could take this series lead because if we don't, we have to win two straight. So that's going to be a tough matchup. Come on, boys. We're back on home ice. Let's get her done. Let's get her done. First period of game number five. And it's 2 nothing us again. Okay, that's a good start. Shifley and Iafalo. We scored two goals on nine shots. They had 14 shots, but they don't score. So once again, they're outplaying us. But this time around, we actually have the lead. So I don't really know if I like the fact that we keep giving up way too much shots. But, I mean, if Hellebuck is going to save them, then it's okay. But we obviously don't want to be giving up that many chances because they're eventually going to score on them. Let's see if we could uh, not allow them to score in the second period. Because if we could shut out them in the second period, we have a better chance at winning this in the third. So, second period. 3 nothing. That's a good period. That's what we need. Perfetti scores to make it 3 nothing. Shots are 27-20 to in favor of the Wild. But we're up by three goals. So, Hellebuck, once again, having a strong performance. Let's see if we could lock this game down here in the third. 
And Hartman scores to make it a 3-1 game. Not ideal. Penalty kill. And Spurgeon scores. No. Come on, Hellebuck. Don't do this to me. You've been great all series. No. Kaprizov makes it 3-3. Are you serious? Come on, boys. We need a response from that. That's why I say don't give up so many shots on goal. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You got to be joking me. I don't put hella buck on that. I put our team on that. We lose 6-3, to three, allowing 6 goals in the third period. Experienced Jets hockey. God damn, man. Yeah, that's not on Connor Hellebuck. That's on the team. We gave up way too much shots through two periods, and then we had it like we just decided to sit back and give them more shots. And then Hartman scored early. Spurgeon scores. Kaprizov gets a power play goal. This game's tied. Then they get two goals back to back within 11 seconds. And then we're down by two goals. They get an empty net. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. There's got to be bad minus players, right? Velarde and Roy, both former LA Kings, minus two. And, yeah, Hellebuck had terrible numbers because the team just gave up way too much chances. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't like that game at all. I do not like that at all. That was definitely, I think, our worst game of this entire series so far. I don't really know what we need to do in terms of limiting their chances. We need to find a way to force a Game 7 by winning on the road. So this is going to be a tough matchup. I am going to go and adjust our lines here and try and find a way to get us to limit their opportunities. Because right now, we just keep giving up way too much. So let's swap Bear Banov in Velarde. And we are also going to uh, move Nick Hag to play in the top four again. Uh, we will move Ruta and swap him with Matt Roy, because why not? And I don't think I want to put Sandberg in, so. Hellbuck has been good, but he's been definitely dropping it a little bit as of late. But I think it's because of the team giving up too much chances. I really don't think I could blame him. Um, is there anybody else I could take out of the lineup? Kupari's a minus one. Minus two for Velarde. Minus three from Cole Perfetti. Okay, we're going to swap Perfetti and Shifley around just to see if Perfetti could play a bit better defensively on the first line. And then Shifley could play second line with Ehlers and Barabanov. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to run with. We gotta win two straight games here, or else we are gonna be packing our bags in round one just as I expected, which is not ideal. Let's go back over to this part and see if we can force a game seven, because if we can force a game seven on home ice, maybe we have a shot at winning this, but if we lose this game, obviously, we're gonna be once again headed <laughs> to the golf course. Come on, boys, let's force a game seven, real-time simulation. We need our offense to be better, and we need to limit their shots on goal. Hey, we score on our one of our first shots of the game, Nick Ehlers. That might not be a good sign, though, because usually when you score early, your team all of a sudden falls apart. Morrissey scores early as well. We are up 2-0 here early on. Good start for our offense, but will it be able to withstand the shots on goal for Minnesota? And once again, we're going to have a 2-0 lead after one. I do not feel safe with this lead, obviously, after last game. Shots are 12 to 10 in favor of Minnesota, so at least we did limit their chances a little bit more than normal. But we definitely can't let this game get away from us in the second. Let's see what happens. Come on, boys. Power play opportunity early in the second period. It's a long one. And we do a score finally on it, and it's Nick Ehlers again. Ehlers has definitely been one of our best players. As Hartman answers for them on the power play. We get another power play goal of our own. Nick Ehlers has a hat trick already halfway through the game. I don't know what's going through Nick Ehlers' mind. Maybe he's like, hey, I need to get paid this offseason. If I'm going to go out in the first round, then might as well score a lot of goals. <laughs> Shots are 28 to 15 in favor of us. So definitely a much better game from the perspective that we're actually completely dominating this game. And uh, most of the games in the rest of this series has been where we've been getting completely outshot. So... Let's lock this game down in the third. I do not feel safe still with a three-goal lead. Let's force that game seven. And hopefully we do not just completely dry up in game seven. This has definitely been our most dominant shot told yet. Gunler makes it 4-2. Penalty kill. Nicely done, boys. Final five minutes. Still up by a pair of goals. 
Oh, Middleton makes it 4-3 and Bersois in net now, which I don't understand why. But we do hold them off and we do win 4-3. So I don't know if Hellebuck got injured or if it was like if it's an actual injury where he's going to miss next game. If it is, that's a huge loss. If it's only one where he's missing the last of the, that game, then that's okay. But that was still a dominant uh, victory in terms of shots on goal. But they still almost won because Bersois was put in net late. Yikes. Ehlers from Shifley and Barabanov. Morsi from Appleton and Kupari. Let me actually change my screen again over to this part. Um, and then Ehlers from Shifley and Eofalo. Ehlers from Perfetti and Connor. And then they got two goals. Let's take a look at the three stars of the game. Ehlers, the first star, Hartman, and Gundler. Uh, let me take a look at our stats here. Any badly minus people? Only Matt Roy. And yeah, Bersois came in for the last three minutes. Allowed one goal on four shots. But Hellebuck was playing pretty good up to that point. Hmm. So, is Hellebuck actually injured or was that a uh, one period type of thing? He was not injured. Okay, good. So he will be back for game seven, which is huge. And yeah, we need to win this game or else we're going to be back in our bags in round one. So, I think we got to keep the team the same. We played pretty solid that game for the most part. So let's uh, get to game seven. Waste no time and see if we're able to get to the second round. We're already knocked out in seven games. As Vegas has moved on to round two. So shout out to Logan Stanley who might end up going on to win a Stanley Cup without us. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see what happens. See if we can get to the second round. Come on, guys. We need a good performance here. And Rasmus Kupari injected into the lineup scores immediately. Shifley scores right after. Shifley scores again. We have three goals in our first four minutes of the game, which might not be good. Rossi scores for them now to make it 3-1. Very offensive first period. I am really surprised we scored three goals that quick. Gundler makes it 3-2. We're going to lose this game. I honestly, yep, we're going to lose this game. When you have a 3-0 lead in the first six, uh, four minutes of the game, you're definitely losing. And then look at this. Three unanswered goals. Rossi, Gundler, Hartman. I feel like you could easily read this image in terms of how it simulates. I am not pleased with that opening period. I am pleased with the first four minutes of the game. But then we kind of just decided, hey, maybe we're going to win the rest of this game. Maybe we don't need to do much. And we give up three goals on eight shots. So Hellebuck's having his worst performance yet. We need a stronger uh, second period in terms of defense. Come on, boys. We're definitely losing this game, though, based on that. Scoring early is not a good thing in this dimension. Barabanov does make it 4-3 as Gustafson's now in net for them. Interesting. Both their goalies are the same overall, though, so it doesn't make much of a difference. Come on, boys. Lock down this period, please. Oh, my goodness. Zuccarello makes it 4-4. They always have an answer for our goals. And it's going to be 4-4 going into the third. We're out shooting 28-18. But Connor Hellebuck has just not been himself from the early stages of the series. We need a strong third here, guys. Because they're matching our offense. We need to find a way to contain theirs. Or else we're packing our bags. Come on. Let's get that next goal. Power play opportunity. Our power play has been good so far, but it does not capitalize there. Come on, guys. Come on, Kyle Connor. You haven't scored in a while, I think. It would be nice to see you score. Or Nick Ehlers. And we are going to be going to overtime in Game 7. Of course. We're definitely losing this game, though. I honestly don't have any faith in this team at the moment. Shots are 37-26. to 26. We're completely dominating this game. But because of our hot start early in this game, we're going to lose this in OT, my guess. But... If anybody scores, I'm going to guess for our team it's going to be... Hmm. I'm going to go with Bear Banoff. I don't know. I just feel like he has something in him. Come on, guys. Let's go to the next round, please. I don't want to be packing our bags to the golf course. Early into overtime here in Game 7. Looking for that next goal. Come on, guys. You got to get it done. Got to get it done. Halfway through this first overtime period. We're getting still a lot of shots on goal. Come on, guys. Please. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we're going to double overtime. We know it ends always so quick in double OT. We're out shooting 47-37. Yeah. We're losing this game here in double OT. We're losing it. I don't feel safe. 
I almost want to just close my eyes and then open them in five seconds because I know we're going to end up losing in five seconds. But come on, please, please. Score for me somebody on this team. Let's get it done. Final few minutes, please. Yes. 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 We actually did it. We actually did it. We won a first round. And I know it's only been two years of the series, but this series has already been stressful enough. Oh, Nick Ehlers, you amazing man. The pending free agent with a big goal on our 51st shot on goal. And we win 5-4. to four in a game that I didn't think we would win after that first period. God damn, we're finally going to the second round. Actually, did we go to the second round last year? No, we didn't. Did we? Yeah, we did, actually. Right? Yeah, I'm completely drawing a blank. We did go to the second round last year, but we finally actually got it done in terms of this series because I honestly didn't think we were going to win it. But we managed to pull off a big seven, Game 7 double OT victory. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I completely forgot we went to round two last year. <laughs> so sorry to the Chicago Blackhawks that I knocked out last year. But uh, Kupari from Morrissey and Appleton. Let me actually change my face camera over. Shifley from Barabanov and Ehlers. Shifley from Ehlers and Barabanov again. Those three first four-minute goals. Then Barabanov from Shifley and Tanev. And Ehlers from Shifley. Shifley came up huge. He had a four-point performance in a crucial game. And I am glad we held on to him for a little bit longer, at least. Ehlers and Barabanov also had three points, so that second line did really well. So Shifley being on the second line might be an okay thing. And we run per uh, Perfetti as the top liner. Like that game from that line. And uh, Hellbuck was okay. He was okay. Definitely not a great first period. Shifley, the first start of the game, Gustafson held his team in it after Wallstead had a very terrible start. I had an Ehlers to third star. Okay, well, we're headed to round two. The question is, who is going to be our opponent in round two after that game seven victory? Let's take a look at our player stats and then see who we're going up against in round two. But it was a pretty good first round, I'd say, for the most part. A lot of question marks still, though, with the team, for sure. Uh, but, like, Mark Shifley, 10 points in seven games, four of those in game seven. He was a plus seven as well. Velarde was okay as well, but minus four. Perfetti was minus four. Don't like the plus minus on some of these guys, but from an offensive standpoint, like Kupari was good. Appleton was solid for where he plays. Lowry needs to be better. Gustafson didn't do much. Ehlers was great. Kyle Connor was great. Iofalo was okay. Barron didn't really do much. Barabanov was good. Shinnikov was a bit quiet. So from our top six, I was impressed with these four guys especially. Uh, from a defensive standpoint, Morrissey was good, as he normally is. Uh, Tanev was pretty good. Ruda was solid. Actually, yeah, Ruda was great defensively. Let's go, Ruda. Hainola was pretty good. Hag was solid. Matt Roy was not great, but he did have a point. Hellebuck was really solid at times. And <laughs> Laurent Persuas was tragic because he allowed one goal on four shots. That's funny. Okay, who are we playing in round two? And then that will be pretty much it. We'll take a look at their lineup and also how they did in the first round as well. It is going to be the Colorado Avalanche. We have a rematch of last year. Because last year we beat Chicago and then we took on Colorado in round two. Winner will play Vegas or Edmonton in the conference finals. Colorado. Do we have it in us to be able to beat them this year is the question. Let me see how they simulated so far in the playoffs. In terms of their team stats, let's see. Actually, let's just go Western Conference, make it easier. Um, so, they won in five games. They were scoring five goals a game, only allowing two goals a game. Power play percentage of 33%. Penalty kill of 89.5. Yeah, we're going to get slapped in the face completely by the Avs again, aren't we? And they're going to become like our new rival. <laughs> I am not looking forward to this matchup at all. Their lineup should probably be identical to last year based on cap constraints, but you never know. Let's see. Landis Cog, McKinnon, Rannon, yes, same line. Nashushkin, Johansson, and Lekkinen, same line. Miles Woods in the lineup now with Ross Colton and Logan O'Connor. And they brought in Mackenzie Entwessel to play with Travis Boyd. And Troy Stetcher is playing forward. Is there an injury on this team or no? 
because if there's no injury I'm kind of confused and that defensive core is even better than last year so Dylan DeMello uh, went to Colorado because obviously if you can't beat them join them that's not great that makes their defensive core even more amazing. So Taze, McCarr, Manson, Byram, Gerard, DeMello. I don't think we're going to be able to score a single goal on that defensive core. And then you still have Georgiev and Phoenix Copley has joined them too. Uh, Scratch-wise, Marcus Bjork, Caleb Jones, and yeah, Wade Allison is currently injured. So that is why it's Troy Stetcher's playing forward. That's going to be a really tough matchup. If we actually beat them, then maybe we can win the Stanley Cup this year because... That's definitely going to be the toughest team to beat ever in the playoffs. So, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Winnipeg Jets franchise mode. So, in next episode, we will take it to round two against a familiar opponent in the Colorado Avalanche as we look to go to the conference finals. So, anything down below, and I'll see you guys next time.